Around March 2019, I started using Notion and getting into this whole building second brain, personal knowledge management stuff. Now it's been about one and a half years of using Notion and really getting into digital note taking. So today I want to share with you how it changed my life and what impact it has had for me. You can find the timestamps for this video in the description, as well as some links to some Notion templates that I have created. In reality, we all do digital note taking in one form or another, but the majority of people use tools such as Microsoft Word or Google Docs. And if you're using those traditional note taking apps, you're missing out on a lot of features and tools that are available in these other actual note taking apps themselves, such as Evernote, Notion, OneNote, Bear, and so on. As someone that uses Notion for their note taking, I've met a lot of people online that use Notion for a range of things, but I've only met one or two people in real life that use Notion. And there are so many features that these note taking apps have that a load of people are missing out on. Whether you're a student, creator, entrepreneur, working professional, essentially, if you're taking notes in one form or another, you could probably use tools like Notion. So you're probably asking, Alex, what exactly is the difference between these note taking apps and the traditional note taking apps? Like, what's the difference? I'm happy, I'm fine, I'm using Word. Why should I use an app like Notion? Well, I'm about to answer that and it might just change your life like it changed mine. So we have traditional note taking apps such as Microsoft Word, Google Docs, and they follow a type of structure like this. You can have a folder and then within that folder, you can have more folders and within them folders, you can have more folders. And in each folder, you can have documents. Like obviously how many folders you want in each folder is all up to you and what you're doing and all of that kind of stuff. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you've done anything on a computer, anything for school, work, you've probably used something like Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, etc. I've used it, I still use it today for some things. And all the notes are individual documents. And then we have note-taking apps such as Evernote, Notion, Bear, Obsidian, and these types of note-taking apps are where you can switch notes, which are very similar to documents in Word, instantly. And all the notes are based inside of one application. And instead of having all of the documents on your hard drive or on Google Drive, for example, all of these are stored in this app. And the majority of these times you can access these notes when you're on your computer or when you're on your phone. And I think they link between, they must link between the server of the company that runs the application. And they have this type of hierarchical structure where you can have like a page and then within that page, you can have another page and within that page, you can have another page and so on. For example, for university, I have this page and within that there's a load of different pages for different things that I'm involved in. And if we take one, for example, to go a step further, say the note taking hub for all my notes that I take for classes, within that I have pages for different modules and then within those pages I have individual pages for each class such as lecture one, lecture two, lecture three, etc. Using Notion and having a hub where I can organize all the different areas of my life from university to the things I'm trying to learn has had a really massive impact for me. It has built structure into my life and be able to visually see all the different things that I'm involved in and working on. I have used Notion for so many things and it's been so helpful from planning my days to writing scripts as well as having a knowledge hub for all the things I'm trying to learn or want to be able to reference frequently or reference to at some point as well as having checklists for the projects that I'm working on as well as working in a team. Also, I'm really excited that this video is in collaboration with Francesco over from the Keep Productive YouTube channel. I asked him a few questions about building a second brain and digital note taking and he has recorded his responses for us and those will be throughout this video. This will provide another person's point of view on this topic and how digital note taking impacted Francesco's life. Big thanks to Francesco for doing this and collaborating on this video. I really appreciate it. The first time I came across this app Notion and this concept of building a second brain was in one of Ali Abdul's email newsletter issues back in March 2019. After I read it, I ended up reading some of Tiago Forte's blog posts about building a second brain and and downloading Notion and consuming a lot of content about how to use Notion and got really interested in personal knowledge management. So from then I started to set up my workspace in Notion. There was a lot of learning, a lot of consuming content, seeing other people's Notion setups. There's been a lot and I mean a lot of changes in the one and a half years of using Notion. So we first got into personal knowledge management at uh, a very young age, well young for the time I think, uh, 14, 15 years old and my interest behind it was more just to keep myself organized um, the trigger for that was that I failed a year in school and I had to go back and do it. And during that summer, I thought it would be a good opportunity to get organized. During this time period, um, I was reading books like Getting Things Done by David Allen and also taking courses from the Tiago Forte set of courses uh, about how to organize your system. And I came across things like the Para framework, which is a, a really uh, effective framework to organize stuff. So from there, I basically set up things like Evernote. Um, and the main thing that I noticed when I came back into school, knowing that I had to redo it that year, is that I was being able to get a lot done because I wasn't necessarily focusing on capturing things across my day. So it was pretty organized and everything seemed to be um, in the right place in terms of it being inside of Evernote, having a task manager, and I just felt a lot less stressed and I could focus on a lot of different activities. So immediately I could see the effects and obviously since doing some sort of personal knowledge management system 
as I've gone through different apps, um, it has definitely grown and, and made me a better person. I'm at a point where I'm pretty happy with my workspace in Notion. There will most likely be more changes as I tweak things, try to improve things, learn more about how to use Notion and as more updates come out, for example. So things are bound to change. I'm also at a point where I use Notion for the majority of my writing and note taking. I actually didn't use Notion last year for my university note, but this year I started using it and it's been so much better. Once you start using Notion, you will come across these things which are a bit more complicated for beginners, such as creating databases, filtering, sorting, creating links databases. I'm not gonna get into that nerdy technical stuff right now. So I'll leave some links to my other videos where I've talked about Notion, as well as some other curators that have talked about Notion and talk about Notion that I have found really helpful that you might find helpful as well. Some caveats to my use of Notion is that I don't use Notion for everything. I will still use tools such as Google Docs or Microsoft Word, especially when working on group projects such as for university. As everyone knows how to use these tools, it just makes it much easier. And for some things such as putting together presentations, Notion is just not feasible. Of course, I still store documents on my hard drive or Google Drive like I would need to or anything that I might need to store documents on such as my CV or PowerPoint slides for classes. Also, as I said, I use Notion for taking notes for class, but I haven't used it for writing essays yet. I've, last year, I used Word for writing my essays. I might try using Notion for essay writing. I don't know yet, but I don't, I don't see why not. But I thought I would just point out that I've not used it for essay writing yet. My current sort of second brain or digital note-taking tool is uh, Notion. Uh, I pretty much use it daily to organize everything from my work tasks to my goals and also my notes as well. And it's actually become a really useful system. Um, I even use it with my wife to plan um, things like the mortgage, things, exciting stuff of course, things we're doing with the little one and uh, even my own personal note taking as well. Um, it's grown, I've used Evernote in the past, uh, Evernote I still use is I guess my filing cabinet because it's got a lot of sort of documents inside of it, but Notion is my heart uh, at the moment or my hub of information. Using Notion and digital note taking has really allowed me to manage multiple things. Yes, being able to manage multiple things does come down to effective time management, but being able to visually see that using Notion has been really helpful for me. For anyone using Notion or getting started using any note-taking app, don't think that you need the perfect setup straight away. Otherwise, you might spend so much time creating the structure of what you're going to use instead of actually using it. When I used uh, Evernote, I actually uh, was using the Power methodology to organize um, projects, areas, resources, and archive. But now I really don't use it as much as I used to. Inside of my um, Notion, the majority of what I do now is trying to capture as much stuff as possible. So for example, um, when Alexandra sent me these questions uh, to go through with you guys, um, I actually um, put them inside of Notion instantly because I wanted a sort of place where I could reference it and find it for later. So if I'm ever searching for things that me and Alexandro have done, and then I can find that all there. So now it's really all about sort of capturing stuff so I don't miss anything. Things like emails that can be captured, things like notes that I have, and uh, key bits of information. Um, some stuff I still save inside of Evernote, um, mainly the file side of stuff, but the majority of the plain text notes, and the majority of them go inside of Notion. So thank you very much to Alexandra for having me here on the channel. Um, it's been uh, very much an honor to be here. All right, thank you everyone, cheers. Thanks a lot for watching this video, I hope you did enjoy it. Big thanks to Francesco for collaborating on this video and talking about how digital note-taking impacts his life. Make sure you go check out his channel, link will be in the description. I really enjoyed listening to his responses and hope you find some value from them as well. Please like, subscribe and hit the bell to see more videos. It really helps with the growth of the channel and to push the videos in front of more people. Also, if you wanna see more behind the scenes look into my life and my work, you can follow me over on Instagram. I also share some of the other photography and filmmaking stuff that I do over there as well. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys very soon. We did it. The camera didn't die.